I think these exquisite 14th century wall paintings are so special because they represent such a different view of the Tower of London, contrasting with its reputation as a place of brutality and torture. In this disarming portrait, Mary, the eldest daughter of Charles I and Henrietta Maria, is five or six years old. She's almost certainly being presented for the international marriage market. This exquisite crown is the smallest in the collection. It was worn a great deal by Queen Victoria in her later years and is closely associated with her. But this glittering miniature crown was not commissioned out of pleasure, but from grief. The English never really took to the heavy swirls, the layers and the wedding cake details of Baroque architecture. But here and there some choice touches can be found and these heads are just about as exuberant as you can get. This is a fairy tale Princess Charlotte at the happiest time of her life with much to live for. A foretaste of the golden years raising a young family during the summers spent at Kew. This ancient spoon, the oldest item in the crown jewels, is the only piece of royal goldsmith's work to survive from the 12th century. I think the best way of imagining um, what these ceilings mean is to imagine William himself standing there and what he's saying through these paintings to his guests is welcome to my private party, enjoy yourselves, live and love like the gods but don't forget who's made all of this possible. Flamboyant, extravagant wrought iron stretched to its uttermost limits. In the autumn of 1885, the 25-year-old Lord Boston went to Henry Poole and Sons on Savile Row and ordered this glorious gold-embroidered full-dress second-class uniform. It cost what was then the colossal sum of 115 pounds, but he wore it proudly for the rest of his life. This magnificent gallery, richly decorated with classical ornament, houses an impossible grouping of people. In the centre, Henry VIII, on his left, his precious son and heir, Edward, and on his right, Jane Seymour, Edward's mother, who died from complications following his birth. This painting captures Henry VIII's concept of an ideal palace and an ideal family. A fashionable 18th century lady at court could do almost nothing in this mantua but stand still, the rigid stays keeping her upright for hours in the monarch's presence. Any physical activity other than some light dancing was impossible, which was the whole point. The knight raises his eyes upward, arms shielding his anxious face. He twists his body to look at something above a tomb-like structure behind him. What could he be looking at in such alarm? This life-size portrait captures the King of Denmark formally, but we should remember that this is the man who allegedly insisted that Danish beer be brewed to be the strongest in the world. Much of what we have in the archaeological store at the tower might be considered rubbish, but it's interesting rubbish. This late 18th century pewter tankard was dug up in the 1990s at the end of Mint Street, where there once stood a tavern called the Stone Kitchen. We assume it was the favoured haunt of one yeoman warder Francis Dobson, as it is his name, along with the taverns, that is engraved on the tankard. I can imagine it hanging up behind the bar, waiting for him to come in. The paintings were commissioned by Charles I in 1630. Nineteen years later, the doomed king was to walk under this magnificent ceiling on his way to his execution. These puzzle maps, some of the earliest ever made, belong to the children of George III and Queen Charlotte. Cut out by hand, they're the original jigsaws as they became known in the Victorian period. When visitors wander through some of the grand rooms of the State Apartments at Hampton Court, they hardly ever cast their eyes down and notice the great brass locks that adorn many of the doors. And I'll bet they're not aware of the delightful fact that some of them were made by a man called Josiah Key. I have been fascinated by this staircase ever since my first visit to Kensington Palace because of the mysterious figures on its walls and ceilings. I do think that they are all real people and that one day it might be possible to identify each one of them. Mothers invariably have a soft spot for their baby's shoes and many preserve them lovingly for years. Queen Victoria was no exception.